has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our Thursday service. This is where we bring you the word of God, the ever-living, powerful, life-changing word of God that will bring transformation in your situation. I want to say thank you so very much to every one of you who has been texting, sending in a text or sending in a comment. Thank you so much to all of you that respond and, uh, and bring in your offerings, bring in your tithes and your sacrifice. May the Lord richly bless you. May your doors be opened up. May you be able to see opportunities where others don't see opportunities. May you be able to see where you need to go, that you will not just be tapakaring in life, but you will be focused in whatever you are doing as a result of receiving this word. Because this word is alive. It is powerful. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. And as, I, as we bring in the word to you, we come to you with boldness because we have seen this word working. This word works. It works for anyone. Who will, be, who will dare take a step and believe and put the word into action. Now, the last few Thursdays we've been looking at the blessings that the, Paul tells the Colossians is found in them. I want you to know that there are things that God has already done for you. There are blessings that God has already placed into your life. And what, all you need to do is to discover all you need to do is for your eyes to be opened up that you may see. Remember what Paul tells the, the, the Ephesians. That ever since I heard of your faith, I cease not to pray for you. I pray that God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give to you the spirit of wisdom and understanding in the knowledge of him. So you need the spirit of wisdom and understanding and knowledge in the understanding or knowledge of him, Jesus Christ, that the eyes of your understanding may be opened up. That is my prayer for you tonight, that the eyes of your understanding will be opened up, and it's only God who can open those eyes, that you may receive that which he has prepared for you tonight. May this be the night when your struggles come to an end. May this be the night when that sickness disappears out of your body. May this be the night when your predicament is turned around into a great blessing. May this be the night when you receive new ideas that will catapult you to the top. Even as we look at the blessings that are found in Colossus. And this is found in Colossians chapter 1 from verse number 4 to verse number 6. Verse number four to verse number six. You can read it and you will discover that this, that there are six blessings that the Colossians had. Number one, they had faith in Christ. Their faith was in Christ Jesus. Number two, they had love for all the saints, the good ones and the bad ones. Number three, they had the hope of eternal life or the hope that is brought by eternal life. When you receive Jesus, you receive eternal life. And there is a hope that comes with that. That death is not the end of everything. That the grave is not your final destination. That even those who have died are still alive. Number four, they had the truth of the gospel from the beginning. They had the truth of the gospel from the beginning. In other words, a good foundation was laid in their lives. Foundation is very, very important. I pray that you, be, you, build, you are built on a firm foundation. Number five, which we did not finish. Number five, they experienced fruit bearing. They experienced fruit bearing. And we, have, we did see that the command that God gave to man in Genesis 1 and verse number 28, after blessing man, after God blessed the man he had created, he said to them, be fruitful, be fruitful. Therefore, God expects you and I to be fruitful in whatever we do. 
that which is put in you is expected to reproduce of its kind. In being fruitful, multiplication is manifested. He told them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. In other words, the end result, the final result is for men to have dominion here on earth. Because God, man was placed on earth by God. For that to happen, you have got to be fruitful. In being fruitful, you are bringing in multiplication. As you multiply, you are replenishing. As you replenish, you are subduing. And in subduing, you end up having dominion. And we did see that even the ministry of the word has got to be fruitful. Your business has got to be fruitful. Your life has got to be fruitful. God has put in you the ability of being fruitful and expects you to be fruitful. In fact, when you read in John 15 and verse number 8, you will discover that God is glorified when you bear much fruit. In other words, God does not want you just to bear fruit, but much fruit. Bear much fruit. Then you shall be known as his disciple because you are bearing much fruit. Pastor, as you preach, let this word be fruitful. Bring fruit. And when you are not fruitful, God it dislikes fruitlessness. He dislikes fruit, fruitlessness. In Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 19, Matthew 7, 19, Jesus said, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. In other words, God does not want, expect you to be fruitless. Every tree that does not cut, that does not produce good fruit is cut down. My friend, your tree will not be cut down. Your life will not be cut down because you are going to produce much fruit. As we preach this word, this word is a seed. It's called a seed. And this word has results. Anytime you preach this word, it brings back result. I can tell you since I came from Nakuru to Nairobi, I have seen the lives of many people change. When I came to Nairobi, the Lord spoke to me that I will find people who are discouraged, people who are frustrated, people who are pain, in pain, people who have resigned from God and stuck at home. And I can tell you, I have had so many people who have come to me and tell me, me, I stopped going to church because I was hurt by somebody. I was hurt by the pastor. I was hurt by an elder. They spoke hard words to me. So I decided I'm not going to church. I would just sit at home. But I saw you on TV and you said that you are looking for people who are hurting. And ever since I came, my life has been transformed completely. I have had people who have stayed in, at home two years without going to any church, but they have been restored. Why? Not because of my karaoke, not because I have an injection I give to them. All I do is give you the word of God. And this word is fruitful. This word is fruitful. It produces fruit. Not only that, it does, the word does what it says it will do. Or God does what he says he will do. Because you cannot separate God from his word. And as I preach this word in different parts of the world, I have seen this word bring transformation. I have seen this word bring transformation. Last time I told you about this lady in Embu who whose whose uh, whose bricks bladder bricks had been worn out completely but she listened to the word heard the word and was completely delivered came and testified publicly publicly with documents from her doctor of what the lord had done 
I want you to know that the word does not fight against medicine. The word does not fight against medicine, but the word works. Where medicine has failed, the word will work. Where your faith rises up, the word will work. And this other, I told you about this other lady who developed a gynecological problem after giving birth. And for about three years or so, she was on medication and she had the word was completely healed, testified publicly, and her doctor had her and called her for a re-examination. And the doctor gave her the letters of discharge. Why? Because this word produces fruit. This word produces fruit. I want you to know, my friend, that the word of God is not a respecter of persons. It will work for anybody who will listen to it. I remember very well, uh, we had a crusade in Nyahururu. And on the first day, when we went to Nyahururu, set up our equipment and started singing. And the moment I started preaching, the rains came. The rains came and it rained. And in those days, I don't know what was happening, but there were no shocks. The, the generator is running. We just covered it with uh, Ojuara and the bikes we were holding. There was no, there was no shock. And I preached in the rain. People sheltering uh, uh, along the shops, quite a distance. But my speakers were working. And I, I finished. And once I was, when I was finishing preaching, the rains had subsided. So I called the people from afar and told them, come, let's pray. Come and let us pray. And it was getting dark. We had no lights. So, we, we, so I called, they, they came forward. In that meeting, in that meeting, I remember a school boy, a certain school boy. You know how kids come from school and stand by the crusade. That's what had happened. This boy stood there. I did not know that the boy was blind on one eye. But I prayed. I said, whatever your sickness is, you touch where you are sick. The boy touched the blind eye, his blind eye. And we prayed. And then after we, we prayed, we said, do what you could not do before. And the boy came forward and said, I, when I came here, I was not seeing. My eye was blind, but now I can see. And I got, I, we gave him the Bible to read. And he read with a, good, with a new eye. With a new eye, he read the Bible that evening. That boy went to school. He finished school. He went to university. And he became a lawyer. He's now a lawyer in this town with two eyes. Not with one eye, but with two eyes. Why? Because this word produces result. This word produces fruit. My friend, we are not just noisemakers. I'm not just making noise in your te television set. I'm not just making noise in, on your, in your phone. No, I'm giving you a word that will transform your life, that will bring change completely in the name of Jesus Christ. I remember... I was, we were having a crusade in Akuru, and a certain Mzungu had come preaching. He preached for three days, for three days, uh, four days, and then he said he has got to go. So after Friday, he had to go. And the pastors in Akuru said, okay, Mark will preach. So Saturday and Sunday, I preached. And as I preached the word, I remember so clearly this elderly man who came and he had his cr uh, crutches, and he, we prayed. And he came forward and testified, holding his crutch. And he said, for about 10 years, I have walked with this crutch. I came here because I had, I had this meeting in the radio, being announced in the radio. So I came today. While I was there, I heard the word, and the Lord has healed me. That old man was over 50 years then, and he was jump jumping on the platform because the word has fruit. This word is fruitful. I do not know what your situation is. I do not know what you could be going through. But I want you to know, my friend, that this word produces fruit. I remember very well this young girl. She was a third year student at the University of Nairobi doing law. She was doing law at the University of Nairobi. Third year student. Then something happened that her roommate committed suicide. When her roommate committed suicide, she was told she had a case to answer because she did not prevent 
her roommate from committing suicide. Then she had a boyfriend whom she had befriended in Form 6. And this man was living far. He wrote a letter and he said, it is over. So this girl was so devastated, she has a, court, a case in court. Her boyfriend has said it is over. She has quit the church. She used to sing in the church choir at home. She's no longer singing there. So she's not good in good terms with her parents. So she is wondering, what do I do? And the suicide spirit came upon her. And she decided, I will finish myself. But before I finish myself, let me go home and pass through a number of places, seeing my relatives as a way of saying bye-bye. I will not tell them what I want to do. She had some relatives in Nakuru. She came to Nakuru, slept in Nakuru, and for a long time, she couldn't sleep in the night. She had to take, to, to take medication in order to, to sleep, the sleeping pills. She came to Nakuru, stayed with her relatives. The following morning, she was to go to Kericho. She passed by the NCCK in Nakuru and saw a telephone booth, decided to call her people in Kericho and tell them I'm coming. When she got into the telephone booth, there was my poster there, seven great days of a crusade we had done and finished, but the poster was still there. Uh, underneath the poster, there was this writing we had, we care, call on us. And my number was there, 41919. We care, call on us, 41919. She saw that while she was making the call to Kericho. Then she decided, let me call this number first. She called my number and I picked the phone. And she told me, you do not know me and I do not know you. But I have a problem and I think you can help me. I asked her, where are you? She told me, I said, okay, jump into a matatu. Come to Langalanga Mwisho. You have come into the Miracle Hall. That's where I am. You'll find my office there. Sure enough, within a short time, she came. She sat there and gave me her whole story and what she had decided to do. And I told her, you are too young to die. You are not worthy dying. Jesus died for you. Let me pray for you that God may turn around your situation. Because the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Pray and God will answer. I told her that. She said, yes, I told her. The Bible says, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done. Can we agree together? She said, yes, pastor. And we prayed. I prayed, Father, do a miracle in the life of this girl that will surprise her and make her know that you are the God who answers prayers. And finished. And she went away. When she went away, she decided, I will not go to Kericho. I will spend the night here in Akuru. She went back to her relatives and spent the night there. That night, she did not take her sleeping pills, but she slept like a baby the whole night. The following morning, when she woke up, she called me and told me, Pastor, something has happened. I have slept like a baby the whole night. I did not, I did not, I did not have any problem at all, at all. The suicide spirit left her. She didn't go to Kericho. She came back to Nairobi, went back to school, finished her course, and she was employed somewhere as a DO in this nation. I want you to know, my friend, that this word has fruit. This word produces fruit, whoever you are. Wherever you are, this word will produce fruit. Don't just sit there with your problem. Call upon the name of the Lord. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I was preaching in Kisumu, having some seminars in a certain hall. And I've been there the whole week. And I'm finishing on Sunday. Sunday morning we had the service there in that hall. While I'm preaching in that hall, I looked right at the back and I'm seeing a man standing at the, at the door, at the back door, tall and looking very big here because of the way he was, he was dressed. 
I see him there standing there. And he had some stuff he was carrying. And I, I realized this one is a Janeko. This one is a Janeko, a maniac. He's standing there. He stands there. He looks around. And then he decides, I'm coming in. And he goes there. In my mind, I'm preaching. I'm seeing him. And I'm seeing this guy has come to disturb my meeting. So he walks right to the corner at the back and sits down there. The ashes did not see him. The people did not see him. But I saw him because he was right at the back. And I continued preaching. Continued preaching. After some time, I see the man stand up. And now he decides to walk forward to come to the altar. He walks forward and he wants to sit down right there in front. That's when the ushers saw him and they went to, uh, they ran to him so they can get him and take him out so that he doesn't disturb the meeting. I see them running to him and they want to, there's going to be chaos. So I told them, no, bring him here. Bring him here. And they brought him right in front of the, of the platform where I was preaching from the stage. And I looked at him and I said, in the name of Jesus, I bind you, Satan. And he looked for a way to run. But see, because he was surrounded by men, he couldn't run out. So he saw a mwanya under the platform. He decided to go under the platform. He went under the platform and now these people want to get him out. I told them, no, 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 no. You leave him. Let him stay there. Let him stay there. So I continued preaching. And I preach this word, ever-living, life-transforming word of God. Once I was done, I even forgot that there was a janeko under the platform. I prayed for people who wanted to get born again, people who had problems. I prayed for them, and I was about to say the benediction, and then they reminded me, the people reminded me, there is somebody under the platform. So I jumped from the platform, I looked under the platform and I said, come out, come here. And the man came out. When he came out, he stood there and he's wondering what is going on here. And he asked me, why am I dressed like this? Why am I dressed like, like, like this? Why am I so that the guy used to, used to, I think he used to stay where they used to burn tires. So he had smeared himself with the tire suit. He was so black. He had jewelers tied around him all over. A lot of weight he was carrying. And he's asking, why am I like this? I told him, now you are a new creature. I called my guys. I told him, you, take, you t go with him. Go to a lodging. Take him to a shower. Let him take a shower. Go to my suitcase. Get a, get a suit. There's this kind of a suit. It's big enough to fit him. You get that. And, and take and give it to him. Somebody and, 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 and some socks. Somebody said, I will buy some shoes. I will buy him some shoes. I told them, take him to the barber. So he cut his hair. He was taken to the barber. After showering, his hair was cut. He put on that nice shoe, suit and a shirt and a tie. He came in the afternoon. Oh, man. You would, should have seen this man. He looked like a bank manager. When he was brought in and he was seated there, I couldn't recognize who was sitting there. And I asked, where is the man? And he stood up and he said, my name is Bernard. Oh man, this word has fruit. This word has fruit. And the church in Colos, the church in Colos had experienced fruit bearing. May you experience fruit bearing. May you experience fruit bearing. May this word bring change in your life. May the God who transformed that Janeko bring transformation in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessing number six. Blessing number six that Paul tells the Colossians they possess. You will discover they came to know the grace of God. The Colossians came to know the grace of God. Oh, my friend, how I pray that you will get to know the grace of God. That you will get to understand the grace of God. In truth, they came to know the grace of God. In truth, because the grace of God is the power of God. I want, it is important for us to understand that the grace of God is twofold. The grace of God is twofold. 
number one, the grace of God is known as or described as unmerited favor. It is the unmerited favor of God upon your life. In other words, you do not earn grace. You cannot walk, work for grace. You cannot fight for grace. It is unmerited. It is given to us by God. Not because we are worthy, but because God is God. And that grace brings worthiness in us. Now, the second, the second, uh, uh, the second meaning, I told you it is twofold. Unmerited favor. Number two, it is God's enablement. God's enablement. God gives you power, gives us strength to do things which we could not do in the natural. In the natural. Now, for us to understand this, I uh, let me give you an illustration. I just pray that you will capture it. Because many of us confuse grace and mercy. We know our God is a God of mercy. But he is, and he is also full of grace. Our God is gracious and he is merciful. There is a difference between mercy and grace. There is a difference between mercy and grace. Now, to understand mercy, let me see if you will cap we will capture this illustration. There is this young accountant. I will try and explain it by giving a story. This young account accountant, he is working in this big company that is owned by a certain man. And in this company, the account accountant manipulates figures. He has been manipulating figures and it has now been discovered that he has been stealing money. And he has stolen money to the tune of 10 million Kenya shillings. He has stolen money to the tune of 10 million Kenya shillings. Then all the evidence is there. And the auditors come and tell him, we have this evidence to take this young man to court. We have this evidence to take him to court and he will go in for 30 years or 40 years or 15 years or whatever the time. We can take him in. But the, and the, man, the boy is taken in and he is uh, uh, condemned, condemned, judged guilty. He is judged guilty. But the owner of the company stands up in court and he says, your honor, I am the owner of the company which he stole from. And I have decided to forgive him. I feel mercy for him. He has a young wife and young children. So I have had mercy on him and I have forgiven him. And the judge says, because of the mercy of this man, you are acquitted. Go home. Now the young man is free. The mercy of the owner of the company has set him free. But he has lost his job. He cannot work there again. He has lost everything. He has got to go and maybe start somewhere else. That is a demonstration of mercy. A demonstration of mercy. Now let us come to grace. Say, uh, 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 another young man working in the same company has also been manipulating, manipulating the figures and he also has stolen like 10, 10 million. 10 million Kenya shillings. He is taken to court. And the auditors provide the proof. And the proof shows that he has stolen the money. And the judge says he is guilty. And he should go in for 30 years. The owner of the company stands up. And he says, your honor, I have grace to extend to this man. I have decided to forgive this young man all that he has stolen and say to him, he does not need to pay back to me. 
The first one had to pay back, but this one doesn't pay back. On top of that, I have decided to make him a co-owner of the, of the business. I have decided to make him a co-owner of this business. Therefore, he is going to be a director in this company. You see, now the grace does not just forgive, but it forgives and brings in restoration and makes you better. This is what God has done to us. He has made us sons. We were sinners. Adam sinned. And because of Adam's sin, we were condemned. But Jesus has come and paid the price and said, you are now free. Not just to enjoy the mercy, but you have been made a co-heir with Jesus Christ. Look at Romans 8, verse 16 and 17. In Romans 8, 16, he says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. God. We were sinners. Now we are children. And if children, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, that we have been made joint heirs co-heirs with Jesus Christ, not because of what we did, but because of the grace of God, because of the unmerited favor. We have enjoyed the favor of God and therefore been made heirs. Look at Galatians 3 and verse number 29. In Galatians 3 and verse number 29, it says, and if, if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We are heirs according to the promise. The unfortunate thing, you can only operate on the truth that you know. You can only operate on the truth that you know. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. A lot of us, a lot of Christians live in the stage of mercy. Just depend on the mercy of God. But when you receive a revelation of the grace of God, you rise up and you operate on the grace of God. I came to say to you, my friend, tonight, come out of the mercy and operate in the level of that grace. Look at Ephesians 2 and verse number 5. Ephesians 2 verse number 5 tells us that we are saved by grace. We are saved by grace. It is the grace of God. God's unmerited favor. In verse number 8, 2, 8, Ephesians 2, 8, the Bible tells us, for by grace are you saved through faith. That, that, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. You don't have to do work for your salvation. It is the gift of God. Let us live by grace. Now, that is God's unmerited favor. When you come to number two, it's God's enablement. God's enablement. I may not have all the time to tell you all about this, but God gives you the ability. God gives you the ability to do things which you would not do humanly. God gives you the ability to do things, to do things or to achieve things which you could not achieve through your education. Oh, my friend, look at First Peter chapter 4 and verse number 10. In First Peter 4 and verse number 10, it says, As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. 
In other words, God has given you a gift. Now he gives you the grace to manifest that gifting. Look at Romans 12 and verse number 6. In Romans 12 and verse number 6, it says, Having then gifts which are different from one another according to the grace that is given to us, according to God's enablement that is in us. God enables you to accomplish what others have not accomplished. May you walk in this grace. May you walk in this grace. May you operate in this grace. In Ephesians 3 and verse number 7. Ephesians 3 and verse number 7. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. There is a grace given to you. Some of you, you have been given the grace for business. You have been, have been given the grace to teach the word. You have been given the grace to run. Whatever you are given, use it. Run with it to the glory of God. Oh, how I pray that you will, make, you will live in the level of the grace of God. Let me pray with you right there where you are, that you may operate according to the grace that has been given to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this viewer that you have gifted. I pray that they shall discover the grace that you have given to them and operate in the level of that grace. Depend on your enablement. Give them the strength to accomplish that which no one has accomplished in their families in the name of Jesus Christ and to the glory of God. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. My friend, hey, you have the grace of God. Are you born again? Have you given your life to Jesus? Have you said yes to Jesus? Please, let me pray with you right there where you are that you may give your life to Jesus. Pray with me and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you this moment. I acknowledge that Jesus Christ died for me, resurrected for me, and is coming again for me. And right now, of my own accord, willingly, I open up my spirit that you may come in and make me your habitation. I receive you this moment as my Lord and my Savior. For I pray in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friend. Tell somebody you are born again. Tell somebody you have given your life to Jesus. Write to us. Send us a text and, re and tell us what has happened. Now you can partake of the communion. Paul declares and says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and broke it. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Father, glorify yourself in this communion tonight. Minister to healing to your people. Minister revelation to your people. Open the eyes of the understanding of your people. Because we pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, you can partake of the communion. Let us partake of the bread together. Let us partake of the cup together.
May the mystery of the communion work in your situation. Father, we thank you and we bless you for the working of the blood and the broken body of Jesus Christ in our lives. Glorify your name. Let signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, as a result of the mystery of the communion tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please write to us. Send us a text message. Send us a comment and tell us what God has done in your situation. Remember the word of God will never go back to him void. It will accomplish that which God sent it for. I want to give you an opportunity to bring in your offering, to bring in your tithe. Don't be in a hurry, please. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to quit. Let, uh, we, uh, uh, the, uh, the worship is not complete until we have given up our offerings, our sacrifice. So I want to encourage you. Use your phone. Uh, you can use our m -Pesa pay bill number. The number is, uh, is on the screen. You play, uh, and the account is tithe, sacrifice, or our offering. And send me the confirmation. Or you can do a direct bank to bank, to bank transfer from your account to the church account. The church account is Iniquity Bank and the account number is right there on the screen. Or you can use the Equity Bank and Pesa Pay Bill number 247247 and the church account is on the screen. Send me the confirmation. Or you can write a check payable to Deliverance Church LCCI or Deliverance Church Majestic City and send me the confirmation. Thank you so very much. You can also come and worship with us live, 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 live. You can worship with us. We are in two locations at the House of Bread. The House of Bread is located at the KPCU building on Hel Sarasi Avenue next to Marigiti. Marigiti, the wholesale market. You will find us there. We have two services. The first service starts at 8 and the second service starts at 10.30. And our second location is on Kangudo Road after Roy. On second, our second location, Kangudo Road after Roy. You before you just before you get to Otto Supermarket, you will see a white tent on your right. Before stage 26, you will find us there at Makongeni stage, which is now Majestic City, uh, City Church stage. You will see Majestic City written on the wall. You can't miss it. Every Sunday from 10.30, every Sunday from 10.30, we meet there and we are having great times. May the Lord richly bless you. We'll see you again on Sunday. So uh, when you come to church and see you again on Thursday during the communion. I love you and I value you. Ciao, ciao. God bless you.